Hey there, this is Matt with Ultraviolet, and today we're going to be taking a look at a new feature in 40 OS 7.0. Uh, it's the API preview. Uh, before we get into what the feature does, uh, we're going to just cover the assumptions here real quick. And that's basically that we're running on 40, 40 OS version 7.0. So for the time being, you know, if you're running this in a lab, it's probably uh, the best course of action. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so previously, uh, what would happen uh, if you wanted to try to automate certain aspects of your use of FortiGate, you would probably get access to the FortiNet developer network. Uh, and by the way, uh, if you don't already have access to the FortiNet developer network and you are looking to um, gain access, get in touch with your account team. They can sponsor you for access. It should be an account manager and a uh, systems engineer, and they should be able to sponsor you for access. And what you would typically do, I'm gonna go ahead and pick on the firewall. And what we would typically do is we would actually look at the function we're looking to execute. So in this case, firewall policy. And if we wanted to create a new policy, we would look for the post. Uh, RESTful API uh, language uh, without getting into too much. Typically a post is, hey, we're gonna create a new object in a table. And you know, for this, we're gonna go ahead and create a new you know, policy. And this is the model. And uh, um, I'm not, a, I don't have full disclosure. I don't have a programming background. So this is generally what the object would look like, a policy, full policy object would look like with all of its members. And this is not to say that these are all required. In fact, uh, there's only a few things that are required here and they should be denoted with the red asterisk. I can't see them here, but you know, it will show you. It does say up top that if anything uh, has a, an asterisk, it's required. So the example value, now traditionally, this is what I would end up having. And I'd have to figure out which of these values I needed for the job I'm looking to do, which in this case is create a policy. So, you know, not having, not being 100% uh, familiar with uh, JSON and what it really needs to look like, uh, this can pose a little bit of a challenge for those of us, you know, looking to get more NetOpsy or DevOpsy with our network or just trying to provide a, uh, a working example for this. So fortunately, our friends over at Fortinet have uh, listened to us and heard that need and they have created the API preview. And we're gonna go ahead and pretend like we're going to set up a policy. So we're gonna say call this access and the source interface is going to be port one, the destination interface is gonna be WAN one, the source, Let's just say whatever the onboard address, the destination is all. Uh, we'll go ahead and do HTTP and HTTPS only. Okay, and we'll, do it, we'll leave it in a flow based. Let's say we want to enable uh, AV, web filter, and IPS. We'll just leave those as the defaults for now. Now I could just click OK, and everything would be great. And, you know, do the onboard address, everything would be wonderful. I don't want to do that. I want to I want to automate this and the reason why I want to automate this is so I can get a template so once we've got all of our changes to the policy here what we want to do is take a look at the API preview because this is how you would automate this now granted these are single values but you could have variables here in a script to replace that so that if you're reading from a spreadsheet or whatever other data source you can go ahead and grab this What's important to note here is what this information is, uh, what this information is we're looking at. So the, this bit right here, the method URL and the parameters, these are, um, um, these are something specific to the API itself or to the 40 OS UI when it makes a call back to the FortiGate. This is the method it's going to take. Just like I spoke earlier here, we're gonna use the post to create a new policy. The URL is everything after the FQDN or IP address of the FortiGate. And then the other thing I care about is the data. 
the data of the request. This is exactly what we're going to be sending to get the results we want. So for those of us who may have, you know, found this a little bit challenging to figure out what exactly, you know, and uh, maybe spent even countless hours with Postman, which is back here, um, trying to figure out what the request needs to look like, all of a sudden now we have a working uh, reference of something real that we can say, hey, this is what it needs to look like in the, in, in the request. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that to the clipboard and we'll create a body here and it's just going to be raw and in this case it will be JSON. And it looks like it's putting all of this data in there, though I don't know, um, unless they've changed the API drastically from 645, I don't know that that's really what we want. I think I can get away with this. So I'll be here. Okay. Well, here's what I'll do. I'll create a new request as well. Go to the body, go to raw. And we'll go back to Jason. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically attempt to get away with not all this stuff. And I can just bring it back one day. There we go. Perfect. Um, let's see here. There we go. I think that's more in line. Prettier to see. All right, I'm gonna go get a, an access token real quick. This is the part I don't want you to see because it has a uh, access key. You know what, to heck with it. I'll go ahead and delete this user um, after we're done. So if, if you've never generated a REST API request before, um, let's see here, I forget. I might be getting my APIs mixed up here. So oh, I think I've got to include that in whatever request it is so if i go back here go back here grab this guy okay so stop I'm gonna grab you and if i go it's gonna be post https colon whack whack uh dot for dot ultra violet dot network forward slash and then do that and then if I can remember, oh yeah. And access token equals protect these with your life, kid. Kids, do not do not use these. Uh, do not show these to other people. So while you're seeing this on my video, fine. This user is going to be deleted by the time uh, this video is posted. Uh, Please, when you generate a REST API user, uh, you want to go ahead and make sure that you know, you're protecting this because this can be uh, very damaging. So, all right. Uh, in this case, so we'll go back here. Just so you see, I don't have a firewall policy still. Uh, I do have a REST API user. Oh, where did I go? Uh, system administrators. He, this is this guy. He will authenticate with an API key, and I should be able to just send this. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's see what's going on here. Meta. I 
And there you go. So now, I, I think I uh, what I did was for my access token, I went ahead and put the quotes in there and that failed. But now we got an HTTP method, it's a post. Status is success, HTTP status is 200. And let's go check and see if we actually have policies and objects here. Oh, uh, well. Maybe not. I look like a bozo. That's great. Well, it's there. It's not in the GUI. Um, okay, well, there it is. But for whatever reason, it doesn't show up in interface pair view. Um, I'm going to have to go back and look at that. I don't know if it's a UI bug or whatnot. I'm going to go ahead and test this out um, in a private window. Maybe it's just web cache. Oh, so if we go to dot or Okay, so the policy is there. So it could just be my web cache. Um, and that would explain why it didn't show up under interface pair view. So if I do what was, what's the control F5, how do you clear cache and edge? I don't know. Um, so if I just, you know, history, hey, you're going to see all my dirty history. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, goodness. History, clear browsing data. Okay. Um, I don't want cookies, just cached images and files. Okay, now let's see if this does the trick. Huh, interesting. I don't know, I have great cookies. So, mystery. will probably get me kicked out, yep. Yeah, there it shows up. So it was a cache issue. Um, so yeah, um, this is, you know, maybe a little more raw than, you know, uh, than uh, some of you are used to, but I just kind of wanted to show the, you know, that there was some integrity with this, that there wasn't a lot of, uh, um, there wasn't a lot of, there, there was no real behind the scenes. So I hope this is helpful. Um, I know for those of us looking to do more with our time and offload the repetitive tests, this can be a boon. So a big shout out, you know, and thanks to the, uh, the, 40, uh, the 40 OS development team um, and uh, you, Jay Thompson, FTNT, thanks for uh, including this. All right, guys, I hope this has been helpful and uh, I'll see you on our next video.